Hi everybody, how you doing? It's me again and I'm just popping in to um, share some new release stamps and stencils from you. Um, so Lavinia Stamps now are going to be uh, designing and creating their own stencils which is great to have alongside with their stamps. Those of you that follow me know that I do love stencils. I've worked with stencils for many years with different companies and I'm so pleased that uh, Tracy Dutton from Lavinia is now designing her own stencils. So the first one, this most fantastic, um, we're going underwater with the Lavinia this release. There's some fantastic mermaids which um, and fish, which I'm going to leave those for another YouTube so we can have a chat about them. So this first one, I thought I'd share this fantastic jellyfish with you. The detail is amazing. So I have a couple of examples and then we'll get on with a card design. So this first one here that I'm going to show you, just bring into shot, this one is using the rock salt background and brush shows. So for those of you who've done rock salt before, um, you can use it with watercolours. I tend, especially for my workshops, I like to find old techniques but put my own spin on them. So all I've done here is take a piece of, of card. This is the um, Lavinia Multifarious card. Forgot what it was called then. Um, and I've put my brush oil powder on, just three colours, spritzed it with water, and then I've put my rock salt. It is best if you can get the nice um, coarse sea salt that you, in a grinder. Um, put plenty of that on, leave it overnight, brush the dry salt off the next day, and it's perfect. I love all these little areas, look. Can you see? These are just gorgeous, where the salt absorbs the water and you get intensity of colour lovely again don't need a lot else there look at these tendrils i've stamped them this way they make gorgeous seaweed so that's one design to show you this one i loved creating this one it's just it's a background we've done before and it's just where i've put ink on some bubble wrap rolled billy brayer over it and then onto my card perfect for underwater i thought and then there's our jellyfish and these are some of the other new stamps we've got coming up. I particularly love this one. So that's another design. That I wanted to just keep to my, to be honest, my two favourite colours of the moment. It's, um, I just love that combination of the blue and the green. And then this one, look at that. You don't need a lot there, do you? Just purely stamped. Um, I have put clear embossing powder over. I've stamped in black. I like to do that. Black ink, clear embossing, very forgiving. And... Just watercolour painted the colour in using my Distress Oxides on my mat with water and flicked some of the colour. And again, I've added some glossy accents. Well, you need it with this sort of design, don't you? Can you just catch that? I just wanted to look like you could see the water dripping. I must say I've had great fun with these. So the one I thought we'd do today is this one. Bring this in. So as I say, Lavinia have now got stencils. And this is the design I thought we'd have a look at. So very simple really, some stenciling in the background, a little bit of stamping and a little bit of colouring. I'm going to put that to one side so I can keep an eye on it and see what we're doing. So this is my piece of card, I'm just using a 5 by 7 just because it, it's just an easy size I like to work with. And I'm using some low tack tape. Do make sure it's low tack though. And um, for me, I like to use sticks too. I just find it's the best one for me. Now I'm actually going to put the um, tape on the top of my card here. Now I know the sticks too will not bring the top of my card off. Um, if you do have one that's very sticky, you could always just pop it on your clothes and pull it off. That tends to loosen the tack. So I'm bringing my stencil in and we're going to use this one. And what I like to do with a stencil is put tape down one side and this creates a hinge so that I can look at my work. Oh, look at that. That was good, wasn't it? Must admit, it's very hot here today and I'm not complaining because it's not often we get it hot in the UK. But my low tack tape's that low tack. I don't think it's going to stick. But I am sticking to the craft mat. But hey ho. Like I say, I'm not complaining. So, take two. So we get a hinge when it sticks. It may not stick well today. But never mind, we can get round it. Like always, we're just going to do a one take because, 
you know me i don't like to edit bits in and out because i want you to see how it happens at home in real time now i'm going to start down here with the blue and faded jeans is my choice of color and as you know circular motions with your distress inks i'm using oxides and i'm just checking you can see this and i'm going to blend now with this being a stencil i'm using circular motions but you've got to watch as little areas like this you want to go in the direction of the stencil you don't want to go against it so where you've got areas like this that may lift up you don't want to bend the stencil so i want a little bit of blue in this corner going for sort of underwatery sort of colours but also colours that I know will blend nicely then I'm going to go into my green now for this I'm actually using two greens you know me I love this crushed olive but I want a little bit of deep if I just bring the finished one in just to show you um this is the crushed olive and it blends beautifully we're going to go into yellow but I just wanted a little bit of richness here so hence the mowed lawn So with my green blending tool, again, circular motions, and I'm just going to add, like I say, go in the direction with the stencil. I'm just going to overlap that blue a little. Now, less is more when you're doing this. You really want to build it up. Back in with the blue. I've not put any more ink on my blending tool and I'm very gently doing circular motions over where the two colours join and then I'm going to come back in with my green and again work over that area where we're joining the colours and just do that a few times one thing when people are blending they don't spend um, as much time over the area that blends and to me that's the most important bit so now we're going to come in with my crushed olive and obviously I just want to go from the darker green from that mowed lawn into the crushed olive. As you can see, I'm, I'm not rushing it. And remember, I keep saying it, but do work with the stencil. The last thing you want is A to ruin your stencil and B ruin your work. Just want to blend that area there. If you notice, when I'm blending, I'm just almost holding that stencil down, just guiding it really, so it doesn't lift up. Yeah, and if I want to check, I'm going to hold that, because as I say, it is a bit hot today, my tape's not sticking. But you see, when we've got a hinge, we can just look at our work. I'm happy with the way that blending's working. Now, I'm just going to put the lid on the dark green, because I know I've finished with that for the minute. And I'm going to bring in my mustard seed. So again, circular motions and add some yellow. Now I don't want to go all the way to the top of my card, so I'm being mindful not to take my yellow right to the top. And also I probably won't ink this up, I need to remember not to ink up because I want it to be a bit fainter near the top. So almost if I can just flick some ink let's have a look how we're, how we're looking yeah can you see how faint that is now I just want to work here where the two colours join so I'll go in with the green and just see if I can blend that join with the green and the yellow a little bit right let's lift it up yeah, got a mark there, we go, that's off. So can you see, this is what I wanted. I wanted it to go faint here. And I love that, there's no definite line. We've got lovely blending. So, going to put the lids back on. I'm going to add some water, but do make sure you put your lids on your ink because you don't want to flick water onto your ink pads. I'm going to take my fan brush, which has been standing in water, and... And the reason I'm leaving my stencil on is because I don't want the flicks of water to be where it's blank card. I just want it where I've got the ink. And I'm going to leave that to dry. I'm just going to pop this to one side. I'm 
going to leave that to dry a minute. What I do want to do is just show you I've got ink on here. Now, we may be lucky and get a print off it, we may not. So what I'm going to do is spritz this with water, the inky side. It's slightly wet anyway, because obviously we have just flipped it with water. Sorry, Eric. My black Labrador Eric's just laid on the floor and I've just spritzed him with water. Although, as I say, it's so hot, probably nice and cool for him. Now, like I say, I'm not sure how much ink was on here because I, I tend to blend and use the ink that's on my stencil. But anything I get off will give me the beginnings of another background. And after all, it's just a nice way of cleaning your stencil. I'll just pat it down for a few minutes. Let's have a little look, see if we're getting anything yet. I think we're getting very faint. There wasn't much ink on there. But like I say, it'll give us the start of another design and it will help clean the stencil. So I'm happy with that. I mean, look at that. By the time we stamp some fish, maybe the mermaid. So I'm going to put that to one side. You'll probably see that in another, another uh, little YouTube so if we bring back the one that we're focusing on, let's take our low tack tape off. See how easy that comes off and that's how it should. Shouldn't rip your card. That's looking lovely. I'm just going to dry it with my heat tool a little. Um, just because obviously with spritzing it with water. I do love stencils. I know I keep saying it, but let's just... Obviously, because we're going to stamp on it, we want it nice and dry. Always dry from the back as well. Hopefully, it will be nice and dry. So, now for the stamping. Now, you know me, I like to stamp on some copier paper, well-used copier paper. And this is our, our stamp. It's a lovely big stamp, uh, lots of detail. Now, as you know, I also design, as well as Lavinia, for All and Create. And it just happens for me that their blocks look a perfect for this stamp. So it was a bit of a win-win there for me. Now I'm going to use black, so I'm using my Versafine Clay. We're going to stamp our beautiful jellyfish. Now I'm just going to get um, a bit of wet wipe. As you know, I do over ink on my stamps and I just like to wipe that off because if I don't, I know it'll end up on my design. It doesn't with other people, but you soon find your own little quirks and things when you're stamping. And and I do hope, I mean, thank you. I've had some lovely comments, I must say, on uh, YouTube. Thank you so much. I do read them all. Um, and I hope, um, oh, I'll just tell you what I'm doing. I don't like to stamp in the middle for me because it would have to be directly in the middle. So I'm just going off centre here. Um, what I was saying, I, I do like to, I, I love when I get comments off, especially new crafters or, or people who've crafted for a long time but perhaps lost the way, lost the mojo. And I do try and go through how I think things and why I do think things. Because when I started off, the one thing that struck me was I would watch demonstrators oh, and be in awe of what they did. But they wouldn't show me exactly how to do it. It was almost like it was a little bit of a, a secret. And, and the work was amazing, but when I tried at home, I got nothing like it. And it really upset me. I very nearly stopped crafting because I thought I wasn't good enough. And if it's one thing I want to do, I'm so passionate about teaching it and getting people to, that everybody's good enough. All our work is good enough. And you've got to enjoy the process. So honestly, I do appreciate all your comments and thank you. And if I waffle on too much, I must apologise. There's a reason my parents called me Chatterbox when I was a little girl. Right, so what I'm doing now is remember, don't take both hands off at the same time, just one. With these blocks, with them being flexible, you can have a little look and see how we're doing. 
and also it just there's a lot of detail on this stamp and you just want to make sure I mean I'm sat down normally at a workshop I would stand up I always say I'm a bit little and pathetic and I do stamp better if I am stood up but let's see yeah look at that look at the detail there why do I turn it that way? I'm so used to teaching at workshops. Sorry, I do tend to turn it the other way. This is just such a beautiful stamp. Now, what we're going to do is there's also some lovely words. And I just have to make sure these, I've got them the right way up. For this, I'm going to use grey because I don't want it to overpower. And if ever you're not sure how a colour's looking, See, even first generation, I think, will be too much to keep the underwater. I think we'll go even with the grey, second generation. I think on my original, I did a combination of first and second. But I think for this, I may just stick for second. And I'm just going to alternate how far in it comes. Do remember to take that first lot of ink off. Yeah, I, I prefer that. I think that just gives a lovely underwater feel. So we'll get rid of that. And then all that's left is to add a little bit of colour. Now for this, so here's our finished one. And here's what we're working on. Just put my stamps to the side. So for this, any colouring pencils, or you could use your ink. As you know, I'm a big fan of putting my ink on my craft mats and just water colouring. But what I'm going to do is just use some ink tense pencils. And if we just add a couple of colours, again, I won't spend long doing this. So I'm just going to, at the top, go for a little bit of blue. And I'm just going to... We'll add a bit of blue there and then almost if we've got a, a bluey green I'm almost sort of thinking of the colours we've used and then to make it pop I'm going to add a little bit of red at the bottom because just almost so I've kept the colours that we've used but then I just want to add a, a, an extra pop of colour now honestly at home you would spend so much longer doing this and again you can colour directly over your ink so don't worry about the fact that you've got your stenciling in the background I want to overlap these colours a little and then what you do is just bring your paintbrush into play and activate so obviously ink tends pencils so just activating the colour and look that's lovely I'm going to drag a bit of the blue down there and then clean my brush and I'm going to activate the red here and then almost drag that upwards it's almost going with the the shape of the jellyfish body and then back in my water and I just want to blend that yellow in a little bit. Like I say, I would spend longer doing this. I'm just being a bit quick for on here. So I do want to just bring a little bit of that blue a bit further down. Like I say, everything's sticking today, it's so warm. Right, that's looking better. So, as I say, I would spend a bit longer bringing the red. So, what I would do is just bring the red a bit further up, like this look. And the blue a bit further down. So, the colours will blend nicely. As you can see in my finished one, I've obviously taken longer with that. And also, as you can see... I would add on the tendrils here I would add some colour and it's so lovely once you start colouring and you actually see exactly the shape and the detail in them I mean look 
Like I say, you really don't want to watch me colour. So I would colour all those in, as I say, as I've done here. And then just to add a little bit more colour, I would choose one of the colours out of here. Now I'm thinking, let's go for the blue. So a little bit of blue ink on my craft mat. And in with a fan brush and a couple of specks of that. I'll clean that up. And to finish off, what I would do is, mine's still wet here so I can't do it, but I'll show you on this one. I've just taken a charcoal pencil on here and added some charcoal shading. So if I bring that up, just to show you, so it really gives you the depth here and some little white dots with my Posca pen at the top. But obviously with this being wet, like I say, if I do it, look, it's not going to be just there. Just follow. The stamps are so good. They show you all the detail and where to. So black shading at the bottom and then white Posca pen on the top. And when it's finished, a little bit of massing and layering. I mean, honestly, that took hardly any time at all. But like I say, just a way of using your stamps and stencils together. So I do hope you've enjoyed that. Um, thank you for joining me. Sorry, just keep looking at this. How beautiful is that? Right, anyway, sorry, I was saying thank you for joining me. Um, do take care, everybody. Love and hugs. Bye for now.